<laughs> awesome. Well, I suppose we should get rolling in this wonderful, wonderful. I'm so excited for this one because um, my house smells so good. <laughs> Yes. Well, welcome everybody to What's Cooking with Dr. Cook. Um, we have roasted butternut squash soup tonight, and I'm so excited because, again, we have Chef Lisa Green with us, who is just always a pleasure, and the recipes are always just so good, and yay! And hey, well, thanks this for one's, having me. Of course, yeah. This one's definitely um going to be super fun i think and i've i've never made butternut squash soup before but the process of prepping for it has definitely been a learning experience um so <laughs> i was definitely a little intimidated about cutting the actual butternut squash so <laughs> i had yes. my husband do it mm -hmm. and um I had to leave the room because <laughs> when he first took the butternut squash, I did finally just suggest that maybe he cut the top off first because he started to cut through the actual top of the, yeah, of the of butternut course. squash. And I'm like, maybe just cut the top off and then cut through it. Cause you know, I just, I was, I was really, really afraid that there was going to be an accident there for a second. Yeah, they're a little tough to get through. That's for sure, especially at the raw, raw state. So I tried something. So I um, I sliced some, cut some slices in it. I was running a little bit behind today and I just wanted to see, what if I just kind of slice some, slice it with a knife and throw it in the oven at 425. And I did that for about an hour and a half and it's perfect. And it was so easy to cut through. So, okay. updated <laughs> version, cheat, cheat code on the butternut squash. <laughs> okay, so so did you did you cut through the actual squash and then just roast it whole? Yeah, I just put it in right on the rack. Didn't even put a pan under it or anything. Just kind of went, like you do a baked potato. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's exactly what I did. And then just threw it in the oven at 425 for like an hour. And then I turned it off because I had to run some errands and then I came back and it was pretty perfect. Oh, well, that's amazing. Okay. Yeah, that would definitely, you know, work in the future for sure. Um, so does that impact the seasoning process? Because um, what it we does. did is we cut it in half and then we put the nutmeg, uh -huh. the cinnamon and the salt and pepper on it. And then we roasted it. It does impact the seasoning. It does impact the caramelization. And because I bet yours is nice and brown, isn't it? Of a nice, like. Okay, so yeah, that's what I was going to show you to see if yeah, I did it correctly. That's, that's actually, like, that's probably, that's the best way to do it, is to get that more flavor. But today I was running, I had a lot of, I was running a little behind. So I was just okay. like, let's just throw it in the oven and see what happens. <laughs> so I'll just uh, compensate by seasoning more. I, you know, I've really enjoyed summer, but, you know, like I was texting you, I think I'm ready for fall, especially smelling all these flavors. And, um, you know, I went and put on some fall colors just, you know, cause it's, yeah, yeah. I think, I think I'm ready for it to cool down a bit in the Carolinas. It actually did it naturally this week. It, it got down, I think, to 68 one morning, and it was oh, like, nice. feels really nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we ended the heat wave that super hot week, and now it's about 80. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, very cool. Well, this is going to be great. I'm excited for us to make this and, um, you know, to show everybody, you know, the process. You did score a difficulty out of 10 at a five. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, Chef Lisa does score her recipes um, on foodguides.com, a difficulty rating of one to 10. So the one being having little to no cooking experience and 10 being somebody who's 
more experienced with um you know cooking equipment and having like those you know, yeah fundamental like um skill set and so this is at a five mm -hmm. and well know, how do you feel about that with completing the first part of the difficulty level do you think it should be rated higher or do you think it's Okay, so I didn't actually do the cutting of the squash, but I think, you know, if I probably should have because self-efficacy, you know, that's a, that's a skill that I definitely should have done. Honestly, the reason why I didn't do it is because I didn't feel that my knives were sharp enough. Oh. So, yeah, if, if I would have sharpened my knives, I think I would have had a little more confidence to actually cut through it, but I was terrified. So I'm like, I'm just gonna let Alex go ahead and deal with this. And, and you know, I think, you know, but then I had to, I had to leave. I'm like, you have FaceTime me if you need me to call someone. Um, girl, I, I understand. There were so many times when I was chopping so many of these that my knife would get caught in it and I'd be like, just kind of, kind of throw it off. So I'd be cutting so many of them and I was doing it for the caramelization and getting all that flavor. So I didn't want to skip the step, but. Oh, I'm really glad you say that it was caramelization now because I was kind of looking at them when I took them off the pan and I'm like, did I do something wrong with oh, these? That's just the sugars and it'll be, that's, that's flavor. That's the, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they smell great. So I'm very yeah. excited. Well, the soup itself is going to be rich in vitamin A, rich in vitamin C because of the carrots and the butternut squash. So that's definitely going to be super cool. And, um, you know, with both of those components, we have something that's great for your eye health and also vitamins that are great for your skin. So the butternut squash itself is something that is available year round, but I think is kind of underrated, something that people aren't really, you know, looking at as something that they should buy and kind of mess with, so. Yeah, it's intimidating. You know, that you see this big, you know, oblong shape, cause this was about, there were bigger ones than this. So I would say this is about a medium size, I would say, well, so. But yeah, they're definitely intimidating. But you know, you can freeze it too. Like after this point, you can scoop it out, you know, cool it and then put it in some jars or plastic, however you like to store your frozen food, throw it in the freezer, pull it out for, you know, you can make like butternut squash mashed potatoes one night. You can do, you know, even like pancakes, say you can put it in uh, desserts, you know, or make another soup with, cause this soup, you can change it up every time you make it. It doesn't really have a set guideline. It's basically whatever, A, if you have a lot of stuff in your pantry, a lot of fruit, if you have apples that you need to get rid of, or pears, or pumpkin, I don't know why not. I was thinking about adding a jar of pumpkin to it. We'll see once I get, once I taste it. <laughs> so, cause I never really know when I'm cooking soups. Kind of like, eh, maybe it needs something else. <laughs> Definitely, you know, I was thinking um, that you would be the perfect person to ask um, with the soup. So what would be a good pairing if you are having this as maybe not the main course, you're having it more of like a side. So what would be something that would pair really well with this? Like for dinner, um, I would say go with something of a um, of fall, sort of maybe ravioli, you know, or um, and honestly, you can incorporate the squash. If you have leftover, you can make like a nice little squash sauce to go with the ravioli or a fettuccine or even, um, if you're going to have salad, I would have that roasted beet salad that we did or <laughs> no, we didn't do, but the recipe out. Cause that, I mean, I don't know. This sounds like a good dinner to me. <laughs> yeah. The roasted beet salad, the recipe is on foodguides.com. I made that. It is one of the best salads I've ever had um even if you don't like beets <laughs> yeah I try beets I'm like oh seriously try the beets it's they you try the beets <laughs> they're so good yes. that's another vegetable that people kind of I think shy away from because you know you can't eat it raw or yeah well I don't know if you can't but it's not typically eaten raw <laughs> so um and they do take a while to cook 
So, but they're well worth it. They're so worth it. Yeah, I think one of the things I've seen is butternut squash mac and cheese. Oh, yes, yes. I didn't even, I forgot about that one. I did, I've done that a couple times. That's really good. Oh. Yum. Yum. That sounds really good. Well, I think we should get into it. All right. Yay. Yeah, cool. On. Well, I'm definitely putting on my apron for this one because we're using the immersion blender. Yes, we are. <laughs> I can't remember. I think I had the big boy out last time. So this time I just got the small guy. Okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, this is this is great. Oh, what's the apron today? It's patchwork. It's beautiful. I love it. it. Oh, it is. I know. I'm so obsessed with it. It was a a local buy too. So nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. I figure it would go with several different outfits, and definitely, you know with the fall sweater for the show today. <laughs> All right, I'm excited for you to see these um, butternut squash. So these were very small, so we actually got two. Okay, okay. it kind of makes sense for time of year and where you're located. Okay, well. Ooh, yeah, so those, yeah. Okay, so Perfect. they're they're caramelized. Yes. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go through the ingredients with everyone. So obviously um, butternut squash here. And um, if you are making this for the first time, chef has suggested that you can do it a couple ways. So you can make the butternut squash and the carrots the day before. Mm -hmm. Or you can do it, um, you know, the day of, which I actually have done it the day of. Um, well. it, 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 yes, it does take a while. So um, these butternut squash for me, because they were smaller, they actually took um, two hours is what I did. And they are soft. So um, that's how long they took. And then the carrots, so two carrots chopped up into two inch pieces, uh, you roast those for one hour. So this was prep that was done before just for sake of the time for the show. Um, but these are both seasoned with nutmeg, cinnamon, and then salt and pepper to taste, which is always difficult for me because I like numbers. <laughs> so I did just kind of <laughs> I went, uh, I think, as they say, with what my ancestors told me. Actually, Alex did the butternut squash, but I went with what my ancestors told me for these. And, um, you know, just did some dashes. So I think it's going to be fine. I'm sure it is. Um, it was <laughs> exactly. It's like you're, you're teaching me to, like, taste the food as we go. <laughs> <laughs> And then um, the next ingredient is uh, four garlic cloves, which I will get out of this bad boy here soon. And two cans of coconut milk, mm -hmm. which I, I guess that if you wanna go with a little less, um, you know, oh, yeah. saturated fat, you could go with a lighter version if you want. Mm -hmm. so. And Deanna says it looks so yummy. I know, I'm so, I'm so excited. And oh then <laughs> vegetable stock. So <laughs> enough to cover all of the vegetables. So, <laughs> well, thank you. And the vegetable stock. So, well, there's vegetable broth, but there's also vegetable stock. I'm guessing yeah. they're the same thing. Uh, with, um, when it comes to vegetables, yes. You want to, oh, okay. the same thing. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, so that was another one for me where I'm like, enough to cover the vegetables. I... You my instructions, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's just so far. So I got two just in case. But, yeah, uh, that's what I bought too, because you might need more. 
Okay. Like some kind of vegetables might smoke it up fast, or you might, you know, want it a thicker soup or a thinner soup. It's all relative when it comes to that. You're teaching me so much. Okay. <laughs> Patience <laughs> with cooking. And then, of course, with more seasonings, there's, you know, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, and also honey. Yes. So we've got some honey, and we have, we have ginger. Yes. And so heavy cream. And last but not least, the salt and the pepper. So those are our ingredients we're working with tonight for our roasted butternut squash soup. It's really not, not too many, not too many, so. Oh. All right, so the butternut squash are roasted, the carrots are roasted. So the first thing we are going to do is scoop out the butternut squash. Yep. All right. Yeah, all the carrots. Do you have the, you have a pan or a soup or a stock pot? I do. Perfect. I did put my carrots in first because they weren't quite as um, mushy as the butternut. Okay. So it all depends on what needs to be. Cook All right. And so should this just come out or? Yeah, it should. All right. Ooh. All right. You're going to scoop it. I'm using a grapefruit spoon. That's fine. <laughs> so for everybody who's joining, do you want to tell them how you roasted your butternut squash? Yes. Because you so, were in a hurry. <laughs> yes. I um, I had to take my dog to get neutered today and had some other errands. And so it's running a little bit behind. So I just took the butternut squash and I um, put some slices in it like you do a baked potato and just threw it in the oven at 425, completely whole, like this, and just let it go for an hour. And then I turned it off, left it in there, and then came back. The It worked out really well but I didn't get the nice flavor from the being roasted cut in half. So, you know, you kind of choose, choose which version. Um, some people <laughs> might not like the caramelization flavor all that much, um, or you might be in a hurry. So, or you might want to use your butternut squash for a later date and you, or some of it, and you didn't want to use those exact seasonings that you were using before. So that could be another option too. I'm really excited to learn about that because the fact that you can just kind of cube it up and freeze it for later and the fact yep. that it freezes so well, yep. um, super useful, especially you know, you it, yeah, really. that we're, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't How's it coming <laughs> out? Looks like it's good. Did you try it? No, no, I haven't. I, I will though. Okay, I'll try it right now. I called them first today and they didn't have any butternut squash. Quite... Oh no. No. Just reminds me of when I, when we were trying to procure our lion's mane mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, yes. There was something else that we were cooking that was a little bit difficult to find. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. Oh, not eggplant, was it? It was the eggplant. Uh, yes. The first one. Yes. Yeah. The, the panko encrusted eggplant. We make eggplant all the time since we um, started growing it. Nice. Yes. Ooh. Deanna loves butternut squash and likes to top it with pumpkin seeds. Oh, yes. that is like, that's fall everything right there. Mm. I love acorn squash too. I love um, 
just cutting those in half and stuffing them, stuffing them with like sausage and uh, apples. I've done that, sausage and apples, and then um, finishing it with goat cheese. <laughs> Ooh, That's I've never really cooked good. with acorn squash. Hmm. I've never cooked with acorn squash. No, that's another one that's, you know, it takes a minute to cook, but once it's done, it's, it's just so good. I just, hmm. you know, and this could be a base for, say you wanted a healthier version of like the mac and cheese, the cheese sauce right there. It's a healthier version. You can, you don't have to use as much cream or cheese because you've got the base. The base is the squash. Um, Definitely. Same with an Alfredo. Mm. If you wanted to make a healthier version of an Alfredo, same concept. Look at how I like got that. Um, oh, look at that. That's perfect. Yes. These are deceivingly voluminous. Yes. Yeah, I forget that like all the seeds are located at the very bottom and they don't run all the way throughout. Mm-hmm. That's another nice thing about this one. And they last, they, their shelf life is a, quite a while um, before they're cooked. You know, and you can even stretch that and by putting them in the refrigerator. Right, right. So I think um, when Alex went shopping, he was saying that he actually found the butternut squash um, in the refrigerated section of our grocery store. Oh, that's unusual. But okay. it's warmer. <laughs> there. <laughs> it is here. Uh, you know, I, I thought that that might have been unusual, uh, to be honest, but you know. Yeah, that's unusual. Unless okay. it was processed already, but like cut up. Mm. Then it would be in the refrigerator. I love. <clears throat> Another cheating thing, uh, the frozen frozen cube butternut squash in the frozen section of the uh, produce. That's nice, too, when you are actually in a big hurry and you want something healthy. So, okay. Really good as well. You know, frozen produce, for the most part, it's picked at prime, at um, prime ripeness, and it's froze, flash frozen right away. So... Yes. It really is the ideal way, especially in winter months with the, it's more ideal than can, in my opinion. I mean, no, no, you are a hundred percent correct. You know, from a nutrition standpoint, frozen right. is, is absolutely, um, you know, the next best, best thing next to fresh. Yeah. Rinse off my hands. <laughs> You know, many times I think like people might not understand like the um, process of the flesh, you know, freezing and, you know, it really does um, optimize the nutrition content of the fruits and vegetables yes. when they're taken like directly off of the vine. And a lot of the times the... Um, you know, they're, they have little to no preservatives and, you know, especially with the vegetables have very little salt, if any, um, you know, in the packaging as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, and they're so easy to throw into like a pasta or a soup or without any prep whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I remember, um, you know, when I was doing a lot of uh, community nutrition education, you know, one of the things that I would always show people is a, a can of um, <clears throat> green beans versus, uh, you know, a bag of frozen green beans and the sodium content, because usually like a, a serving of canned green beans had about, you know, 350 to 400 milligrams of sodium. You, you look at a serving of you know, frozen green beans, and it'd be four milligrams. Oh, wow, that big of a difference. Yeah, and that's wow. substantial if you are, you know, somebody with a, having cardiac problems, yeah. and you have to really watch your, your sodium intake or salt intake. Ah. It's all good. 
It was just oh, a drop spoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they like to be on the floor. Spoons, I, I swear. They're like, oh, I want to go down there. It's a one-man <laughs> band. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to rinse off my hands, and I can't wait to show everybody how much. I mean, I'm sure you can see, but there's so much butternut that I got out of those small little butternut splashes. And this caramelization really sticks to your hands. <laughs> yes, it does. That sugar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. So let's take a looky here. So I hope you guys can really see. Yeah, there's a lot of butternut squash in there. So we have that, we have the carrots in there. So next up, what is next? Per the directions, carrots. we have, oh, okay. So it is the garlic. All right, this is always fun for me trying to get the garlic out. Do you have any tips? Um, I would smash it or cut off the tip and then like smash it. But once you get it, the clove. Here, let me show you. Yeah, show so, me. All right, so what I normally do is kind of break it up a little bit. And if it doesn't do that, I take my palm and smash uh -huh. it. All and right. then it all came out like that. And then what I'll do, whoop, take one clove, oh. uh -huh. I'll it. take my knife, and then with my palm there, and then holding it, and then just push down, and then it pops right out. Perfect. All righty. I'll try it with the, the knife. All right. Oh, these are big cloves. Oh, mine are too oh, nice. And Mm, it so good. Are, look at how huge these oh, are. Oh, nice. Mm. Yeah. I love garlic. Okay. So good for you, too. For, um, so good. Well, that definitely oh, popped out. Good. Yeah, this, this works. Ooh, oh. that works really nice. Okay. Oh. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So we just put these in whole? Um, I would chop those a little bit just so they cook faster. Okay. All right. On um, one of these shelves, we'll have to roast some garlic. And that roasting garlic is oh, it's cool. a really great salad dressing base as opposed to mayonnaise. Um, because it kind of gives a little sweet taste, but it does, it makes a nice sauce too. That sounds incredible. Oh, I think I might be pressing it too hard. It's just smashing it. Oh, it's okay. That's all right. It's got to get smashed anyway. As long as the um, protective layer comes off. Got it. Dried layer. It's not, it was all the same at one point. That's just like the. I have a kettlebell in my office, so you know, got games going on. What was that? <laughs> I was just boasting about my kettlebell in my office, so oh. maybe it's my my strength. <laughs> <laughs> Making jokes. All right, this is great tip though. My fingers are getting sticky. But don't they smell great? They mm. do. I love I, I love garlic. I do too. It's one thing that actually does not irritate my stomach. Um, but if this is an irritant to anybody who is, you know, following along, this is optional on the ingredient yes. list. Oh, it smells so good. Super cool. 
I actually have um, like a garlic press, but every single time I use it, the garlic gets stuck in it. Like uh, it doesn't go all the way. So I feel like maybe either I'm doing something wrong or it's like a faulty garlic press. I know which one's the type you're talking about. I think they're just faulty. Okay, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah I'll pull like it out a little here. bit of it and it's all watery and stuff. Yeah, and I feel like that's just wrong. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a design flaw. Okay, okay. Because I keep pulling it out every once in a while. I'm like, this, this should be cool. You know, sometimes gadgets like that, they, they all, they, it seems like it should work. <laughs> but yeah. oh, it's nothing better than just your hands and your knife. For the most part, I mean, yes, these gadgets are fun, and the power tools are a lot of fun. Definitely, I do love the power tools. This, this is what I'm talking about. So yeah, like yeah. I think it's. I don't. I don't know. It might be for a reason. It might just to get that sort of pulpy garlic. It might be what its um, particular intention for that is. That machine. Okay what it's supposed to do, but I don't know. I really don't. Gotcha. Yeah, I was, I was disappointed to say the least every time. Are you a clean your kitchen as you go person? No, sometimes. <laughs> when I, uh, it all depends when I'm at work, if I have to cook behind the line or anything like that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Like hundred percent. Yes. But at home, I try, but usually I'm too busy trying to have everything done at the same time, like the oh. entree, the side, whatever I'm cooking, because you know they all have different cooking times. <laughs> so True. my whole goal is to have everything done at the same time that I have a tendency to not clean as I go. Gotcha. So. All right. Did you put your coconut milk in? Uh, not yet. I did. Uh, you might want to put the vegetables. Where was that in the instructions? Was that right, right away? So, um, all right. Scoop the squash into a large pot, put the carrots in, add the remainder of the ingredients except the cream. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm going to put mine in too. I have mine on the stove right now. Um, Because I... Yeah. And then the vegetable stock and then just put it on the stove. And if you have a lid, you can lid it because you really don't want to get rid of any of the, you want to keep all the liquid in this one. You don't want it to reduce down that much. Okay. So we're not adding any of the seasonings until it's been blended. Yeah. I okay. added some pre because I did not do, I skipped a step. Okay. So. I want to do the two cans of coconut so I can determine exactly how much stock I'm, I'm using. That is a good idea. All right. So two cans of coconut cream, and now we're going with the stock. All right. So here goes the vegetable stock. So it covers all of the... Does your pot have like um, um, measurements in the in, in it? Um, I believe it. Yes, it I'm does. Just if we are it does. close, I am just uh, under three quarts. I'm like two and a half quarts. Yeah, mine's going to be two and a half quarts too. Yay! <laughs> I know. That's good. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half court team. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everybody come hither here. This looks uh this looks fun right now. <laughs> and you know, I didn't like put a garnish with this or anything, but you could garnish it with um, toasted, like those candied walnuts or those peak, whatever kind of nut that was on the beet salad or like 
those toasted almonds, or even if you get some sage and you can fry up some sage in a pan, that's good too. Awesome. For garnish. I didn't oh. with it. Oh but. no, I forgot the ginger. <gasps> that's okay. Just put it in right now when it's on the stove. Okay. How much ginger? Um, I did, I think I put a tablespoon. Okay. That's usually what I do with soup too, is that I put, put it on the stove and I just keep adding the ingredients as it's cooking. Gotcha. I haven't made oh. a soup in a while. I'm excited. Ginger smells so good. Yes. Ginger. So not stirring? I did. Oh, it's good. And then I put the lid on it because I want it to cook a little bit faster. And I don't want to lose any of the moisture, I don't think. I think it's going to be pretty a good consistency of the soup. Okay. I don't think I remember what you said to put it on for heat. Um, I have mine on high. Perfect. So Alex and I were talking about what we wanted as like a, an accompaniment for the soup. And we decided on a focaccia bread. Ooh, yes. Yes, yes. He should make that on one of these, on one of our shows. That is so, so good. And so oh. Not super yeah. difficult, not difficult bread. It doesn't require a lot of um, resting and rising. Okay, so a hundred percent, yeah, because that that to me is like a fancy side. Like that's something that you know, I I feel would be more of like a a ten or an eight, like an eight to ten difficulty if I were to you know actually try to do it for some reason um if, but yeah, yeah. I, I i can see that with never making bread before and then once you like feel the texture of the dough and know the different because you know the moisture in the air how hot it is outside a lot of things affect dough um but the recipe that i have it's only flour sugar water yeast salt five ingredients and not including like the olive oil or cheese or whatever you're putting on top but the bread itself, it's flour, sugar, water, yeast, and salt. Well, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and some oil. And some oil. Sorry, so six. But yeah. I think I think we need to do that like the same time we do the roasted garlic. Yes. Because the roasted garlic would be good. We can make that into a dipping sauce to go with the bread. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm so hungry. <laughs> I know. I want some bread now. <laughs> oh. oh. So good. And that's another one you can just play with. You can, you know, put whatever you want on it. If you want a sweeter, put some blueberries on it. Or if you want spicy, put some jalapenos on it. You know, it's whatever you want. That's why I like cooking too. Because it basically is, you know, there's no set exact like you have to put this in something oh maybe some of the classical things classical saw the recipes but for the most part when you're making soups or just having fun with food it's whatever you want whatever you want is it classical to put the um asparagus in a crudite in the crudite <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Is that a trick question? <laughs> Maybe. Asparagus wrap pump, or pump pastry wrapped asparagus. That oh, that candy. sounds good. Doesn't it? I don't think the we'll what? accomplish puff pastry. Oh. That is like a 15. On the, on the, oh, a home Yeah, difficulty pastry? chart. Oh, wow. It's just tedious. And because um, you fold. You have to have really cold dough and butter, traditionally. So you would like do a fold with your cold dough uh, and then with cold butter and then you like roll it out or even put it through a uh, sheeter. And then you would cold put it in the fridge again, make it cold and then you would start the process all over again. Like fold the butter in and 
it's like layers of dough and cold butter. That's what gives it that flake. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I still want to learn. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, it would, it would be without the right equipment, without that, um, it would be a lot of rolling. <laughs> Definitely. But I think one thing that would be, you know, a, a good skill that I think people would enjoy learning about would be uh, pasta. So homemade yeah. pasta. Yes. Yes. I believe. Yeah. I would love to do that as well. That's, um, that's a lot of uh, letting it rest to let the gluten get all stretchy. Cause you know, that's what makes the pasta and bread stretch. Yeah. yeah so it's just a lot of resting in between going through the pasta maker. So, because otherwise, it'll, if you don't let it rest, you'll put it through and it will kind of stretch out and then it will go boing right back to where it was. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm trying to remember from class if we actually had to make the dough before. The day before? Or? Yeah. Uh, you might have. I can't remember, honestly. I yeah. just stretched my soup. Oh. It's so good. You turned it off or you tried it? Okay. I just tried it. I just wanted to see where the seasonings were. Oh, I've had honey to so many things that I know exactly like how much of a pour I need. <laughs> ah. Okay. Yeah. Mm, okay. That's that's really fun because I expected it to be a lot sweeter. And it's definitely savory. Like, I mean, it has a lot of flavor, but it's it's not as sweet as I I thought it would be sweeter, but it's savory. That's mm -hmm. really good. It's yeah. really good. Now I'm I can't tell if you it. think you just need to evaporate some liquid a little bit. I had mine on a little bit longer. You might want to take your lid off. I okay. can't tell. If you think once you immersify it's all it's gonna be a pretty decent consistency of soup or if it needs to um, reduce that a little bit. Um, oh, I think it might be all right. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. And honestly, you know, the heavy cream is completely optional. Yeah, all that does is um, it rounds out the flavor. It kind of gives that, um, that, what's the word I'm looking for? smooth it smooths it out it finishes it and makes it more um well creamy but <laughs> yeah yeah okay well i'll definitely try it i'm interested to see what happens with these carrots <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> they're just kind of floating are yours floating uh no not anymore okay. uh, one thing about this soup it might be a little stringy once you immerse it, um blend it you know with the carrots and everything if that doesn't bother you eat it it's fine but if you were to say you didn't want you wanted it be, to be smoother then you would want to use a um a strainer like one of these gotcha okay so, i do have one of those but yeah. i like it stringy uh, so it's fine honestly it's preference you know it's all up to you if you don't mind it i don't plan on doing that <laughs> not here <Okay. laughs> not at home <laughs> but i like it's it completely. Well, shall we, is it time? I'm gonna start immerse, yeah, I think so. I'm gonna immerse it, so it's gonna get a little loud. I'm gonna do mine right on the stove. I don't know if you're able to do that. Yeah, I can do it. But it's probably gonna get a little loud for a second. Yep, all right, it's immersion time. Yes. <laughs>
feels pretty nice. <laughs> I think it might be done. I'm going to have to stir this to see. Oh, that? Oh, mine. Oh, I think I still might have a couple chunks. Ah. Huh? I was like, is it a little thin for you or? No. no, it looks it looks good. I I was just checking to see if I, I have some more chunks. I do. I, do. I have a couple. Yeah. Blenders are new no joke. <laughs> oh, that looks so good. Oh, yes. Perfect. Now is time to taste. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. Oh, it's so good. Okay. Now, suggested seasonings. Well, okay. First, I actually think I am going to put the heavy cream in. Um, are you stirring it in or are you immersing it? I am stirring it in. Okay. All right. Yeah, this this tastes so good. Yes, agreed. All right. And then how much honey did you put in yours? I put in probably about a quarter of a cup. But I like my butternut squash on a little bit of the sweeter end of the savory side. Yeah. So. Okay. And I just added a touch more and I added some salt as well. I think I'm gonna add some honey. It's, it is savory. I love that about it. So I think I'm gonna add some honey. I'm a sweet. Well, no, I lied. I'm actually a pretty salty tasting person. <laughs> but, I um, salt, and I definitely like sweet. I like them both. Yeah. Nice balance. <laughs> I think and with I'm the actually gonna, bread. Yes. yes. I'm actually going to a little bit, add a little bit of chicken um, bouillon to it, which is completely optional. Um, I just wanted a little bit more salt. <laughs> Oh, okay. Pretty much. Sometimes vegetable stock doesn't do that. Doesn't give it the same mouthfeel as chicken. Oh, yeah. No, I understand that. Yeah. So, but completely optional. You know, it's your soup. Gonna add. Like. Oh, this looks so good. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to use the immersion blender one more time. So, Okay. Yeah, you ready? 
ready to I am. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for my taste testers. So I wonder if anybody will come and taste this. Hmm. I think so. Guess we'll see. <laughs> I'll leave this here so I can get some some food or bowls, some little bowls. Mm -hmm. I think I hear some rummaging down the stairs. Oh my goodness. It's just so beautiful. It is. And this, you know, can be turned into a sauce for ravioli or like an Alfredo. You can easily add any pasta to this right here to make it. Oh, you know what I was thinking? Like one of my favorite foods is mushroom ravioli. Oh, yes. And this, this. Yes. So good. I'm going to garnish with a little Chinese five spice, which is a basically, it's a blend of um, cinnamon, fennel, clove, star anise, and white pepper. It's one of my go-to fall seasoning blends. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Deanna's hungry. <laughs> Girl, I, I wish that you were right here right now because I would, I would be fixing this up for you. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to garnish it with a touch of nutmeg. Ooh, yes. Ooh, so I can hand this off. I'm gonna have Alexander try it, but here's. Yay! Oh, oh look how pretty! Yay. Oh, it looks so good. Yes, it does. Cheers. Um, cheers. <laughs> here's that, and that. And then I'll make myself a taster. This is so good. I have the teen home, but I don't know. So I'll get to try it later. In probably three years. Really? Yeah. It's like a writer's block or something. That seems yeah. like a really long time. It has been too long. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I feel like where you are, um, that would be something that you would do all of the time because like it's it's cold. <laughs> yeah, it is. All right, I'm gonna move this over there so I can taste it as well. And we'll have our taster tell us. Yes. I already tasted it, I, I couldn't wait. What do you All think? Right. Once again, Chef Lisa, uh, 10 out of 10. Uh, this is amazing. I'm a huge fan of autumn squash soup. I often get like the Panera uh, choice. Uh, you know, that's one of my go-tos. This is better. Um, I'm really glad we have a huge pot of it because uh, I'm going to enjoy this for a bit. <laughs> so thank you so much. But yeah, this is um, you know, just a little bit... I guess, you know, it's that, that homemade uh, touch. You know, it makes it a little bit better than the stuff you get at the restaurant. But I love it. So thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. Thank you. Good job, Allie. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, this is, um, it's, it's lighter than I expected, too. Like, it's just, oh, it's it, I mean, it's delicious. Yeah, it's. It doesn't stay on the palate a long time. Like it's really rich and really hearty, but then it kind of dissipates. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of the other butternut squash soups I've had have been just like kind of, I guess, super rich. Okay. If, if that makes sense to where, you know, you, you could have a bowl and then maybe it's like, I don't know if I really have room for anything else um, because it, it's so rich. But this is, this is something that you actually could have other things with and, you know, cook with to make, even have with pasta mm -hmm. because it's, you know, 
it's flavorful, but it's also something that, you know, you could use as a sauce and it's just so good. It's, it's so, so good. good. Thank you. It's so good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to eat mine all week. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Some <laughs> <laughs> they yeah, must have smelled it. <laughs> Yeah, well, this, all right. this has made me excited for uh, fall, for sure. <laughs> the dogs right. are excited. <laughs> all right. Well, another big hit. I think this is going to be, um, you know, another, you know, regular rotation at at our house, definitely throughout the, the next season, if you will. So, <laughs> you know. We have some great recipes coming up next month, too. Oh, my goodness. Like, some spoilers in the show. We've got uh, sweet potato hash with poached eggs. I'm so excited for That's a huge skill, too. Um, and then co coconut. Yes. <laughs> coconut cur curried chicken. Mm -hmm. So another delicious recipe. Uh, so excited. Yay. So thank you again, Chef Lisa. Thank you to everybody in the audience for hanging out. Um, wow. Hello. So um, <laughs> yes, he's like, that's so good. Um, <laughs> and uh, visit us on foodguides.com. Find us on our socials at Food Guides Health. And we will see you again soon. And have a great night. Bye. Thank Bye, you. Bye, everyone. <laughs>